This is Coogan Cassis for Eiffel TV in association with Macklin's Gym Marbella. We're in Austria here. It's a beautiful, uh, not too cold of a morning, but Richard Towers has brought me up to the, I don't know, what is it, the hills, the valleys, the peak. peak. Yeah, this is a beautiful place. You know, you just walk up here and you can feel exactly how fresh it is. We've got the Alps over there, Alps over there, some mountain there. Absolutely amazing. You can't get a better, better position than this, I don't think. Now, I spent a little bit of time yesterday, uh, watched Vladimir's uh, sparring uh, with quite a few different guys, um, and it's quite a specific and routine setup that works with Vladimir. He's obviously been training here for over 12 years, I believe, so it's quite a, a systematic uh, way of doing things here. Well, uh, that's, that's Vladimir for you. You know, you look at people like Vladimir... Three years ago, I came here, Coogan, and I watched him step by step what he was doing. It's, you know, if you can emulate the the um, heavyweight champion of the world, you know, in in a in a good in a good fashion, you're not doing too bad. So I just I watched him like a Hulk, and and I know what he does step for step. And the funny thing is, three years on, coming back here now, he's doing the exact same thing step for step, exactly the same. You know, it's. It's just, uh, I think, it's, it's exactly why he's in the position he's in. You you intrigue me uh, as a heavyweight. Um, your personality, uh, your background, and I remember being at your fight against uh, Lucas Brown, mm -hmm. and I was a little bit guided for you because I felt that you could quite tell that things weren't right for you at that time. Um, no discredit to Lucas Brown, obviously, but it's, it just seemed that way. And um, how are you after that? Because it was it was a very disappointing night for you, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, any fighter what you know comes a victim of a of a loss like that, it's it's not a nice thing. It's a bad position to be in. But there were things that weren't right. There were things that were right. You know, I'm not going to look for for any excuses. Lucas Brown was a better fighter on the night. I sparred with him. Uh, six months before that sparring is different but you get a good idea of where somebody's coming from what they're capable of and the sparring uh, went quite different but it is what it is it's brought me to a position what I'm in now what you couldn't pay for I'm in a good place uh, with Adam I'm in a good place with Andy Lee with Ryan Burnett we've got Chris Eubank Jr. he's joined the team um, and things life's good you know you can see i'm not i'm not suffering <laughs> so I'm, I'm in a good i'm in a good place and it's it's funny how things work but bad things happen and good things can come from it sometimes it doesn't work like that but we just try and we just have to try and make the best of of a bad situation and i think i've not done too bad as you can see <laughs> your relationship with uh, adam booth interests me also because i always look at fighters that Adam Booth trains and he's quite specific with who he takes on board and it's not a, a frequent activity in, as in he takes on loads and loads of fighters at the same time but the fighters that he has got it does intrigue me to see the setup there Andy Lee, Ryan Burnett and Chris Eubank um, and then there's you like I said you know he's first heavyweight since obviously David Hay so um, your relationship with Adam um, it seems to be uh, an effective one for you in a good way mm, yeah definitely you know it's Adam's Adam and you know what Adam is Adam's brilliant at what he does he's a brilliant person and the results speak for themselves you know it's just a matter of time before I can get out and showcase what we've been working on um, what ways we've been thinking but aside from the professional side of things me and Adam were just he's my best friend you know people used to say to me they'd say well what's Adam like you know when I first went to Adam what's he like as a person I said listen the guy's got me living in this house with his two girls and his wife. That says everything about a human being to me. Not just that he can, he knows who to trust and when to trust, and when not to trust. But he's he's got faith. He's got faith in what he does. He's got faith in the people around him. Otherwise, he just won't bother having those people around him. And the results speak for themselves. Like I say, Andy Andy Lee. You know, he's pulled a few a few good things out of the bag. Ryan Burnett is pulling a few good things out of the bag. And Chris Eubank speaks for himself. So it's just a matter of time. I can't wait to get out there and showcase what, what I've been working on. But um, 
I'm looking forward to one. You'd probably admit that you haven't been as active as you would have liked to have been over the last couple of years. Um, in that couple of years, is it a case of you've sort of watched the heavyweight scene kind of drift drift past you and you wanting to get back into that mix uh, sooner rather than later? Yeah, it's well, you know, I, I enjoy seeing people do well. I enjoy seeing people progress. Um, certain things have not worked out the way we planned. Uh, little injuries here and there, people pulling out of fights here and there, but it's just the way it goes. You know, I was on I was on ice for a long period of time, which we spoke about. Uh, so I've not had any odd real hard fights. I've not had any wear and tear. You know, I'm still fresh, but um, I'm I'm not as narrow minded to think that if um, this doesn't work out or that doesn't work out, oh, it's it's over for me. You know, I, there's always a way. There's always where wherever there's a will, there's a way, and me and Adam, you know, like I said, we're, we're, we're really good friends as well as um, professional, um, professionally working together. And you know, it's it's just a case of uh, cracking on with what we're what we're doing and making making the best of what we're doing. And we plan to. We've got some got some good plans ahead. A, a big factor uh, and a fact about your life is that you spent uh, a huge proportion of it inside prison. Which is no secret. People people do know. But what what is what is it that motivates you? Obviously, to put that firmly behind you and concentrate on making your career a success, and obviously putting your life back in order. My children, my children are my main my main reason for for the drive I've got for. Uh, the good intention I like to have and the good person I like to be. If I'm going to teach something, then I at least have to practice it. If I'm going to teach the right way of life, then I at least have to be living the right way of life. My little boys, how they look up to me, is 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 you know it's it's amazing. So I've I've got a, I've got a job to do as their dad. I've got a job to do as a man, and I've got a job to do as the breadwinner. So I don't plan on. Um, giving anything up I don't plan on sitting back and watching the world pass me by uh, I plan on making sure that everything's in on track everything's on point and I'll always do the best best I can for for my children but they are my main source of drive um, everything else is I'm just like I say I'm enjoying um, and I'm lucky to be in a position where I can enjoy what I'm doing and get paid for it at the same time uh, but but prison prison's that far behind me now, that way of thinking, that way of life, it's it's that far. I've left it left it that far behind. Um, it's it's not even a case, not even a consideration. Uh, going back there or going in that type of direction, uh, I've got I've got a job to do and I'm enjoying doing my job, and um, it's just a case of. Uh, just keep doing what I'm doing and, and see what comes of it. And I just happen to have a few good people around me and uh, two beautiful children to inspire me. So, you know, I'm, I'm in a good position, man. I'm in a good position. I'm not going I'm going back, back anywhere close to that, that position, what I once was. Do you look back at that time that you, you spent in there um, and accept it now? Or do you look back at it and think you've wasted uh, that part of your life with regret? Yeah, there's parts of me what does. I do look back and I think I wasted a big chunk of my life because I did. It is what it is. I was in. I went to prison when I was 19. I got out when I was 27. You know, and I'd been to prison numerous times before that. Um, so yeah, of course I do. I look at things and I think, oh, I've wasted this time. I've, I've done that. If I'd have started boxing at this age, then I could be in this position. But what's the point of doing that? What's the point of dwelling on things? I might as well just look at it for what it for what it is and like I said make the best of uh, what once was a bad situation and like I said I'm not doing too bad um, I, I look back and I think of all the close shaves I had when people tried to blow me head off when people stabbed me I look at all the situations when I've been scolded and I've been been through the walls and back but the fact is I'm here I'm capable and I'm ready I'm ready for whatever challenge may face me um, and if you can be in a good position like I'm in and have good people around you and be enjoying the position you're in, then you've got it cracked as far as I'm concerned. As Brendan used to say, you've got it cracked. Oh. 
Something that's not always talked about is uh, the the psychological and mental state of boxers. Um, I'm not a boxer, but I do understand that to to be a fighter, that you have to have a certain thing about you, shall we say, that isn't in everyone. It's it's in very few people uh, to lace up them gloves. I can see, and you know, for you being a professional boxer, to obviously have gone through the time you did in prison psychologically and mentally what did that do for you and what does that do for you moving forward well at the time you know when you're going through things you don't realize that it's actually they're actually paving stones of where you're going to become of what you're going to become you don't realize these things are as important as the things that you've not been through or you've avoided going through the the far more important those things because we're molded by our we're conditioned by our um our circumstances in life and I don't think much there's much better preparation for such a hard job than going through hardships and I'm not I'm not listen I'm not taking um, dismissing you know any responsibility from where I was I put myself there I put myself in these positions but what I am saying is I do realize that Life hasn't gone the way probably my my mum planned for my life to go. It's gone a different path, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to end up in a good place. You know, we don't know. You know, they said the best way to make God laugh is telling me plans. I'm just going with the flow. I've I, I speak to people with respect. I'm I'm never shy of shaking somebody's hand. You know, I've I always, you know make alliances rather than enemies i try to anyway you can't help it sometimes because some people will, they'll, they'll they'll argue with their own shadows but like i say it's it's just a case of chipping away at the block and seeing what comes of of the situations i'm handed the people that i'm handed and i've ended up with a very small circle of people but each one of us i can say you know and it sounds a little bit raw but i can say i could leave my wife in bed with each individual person that's around me and wake up the next morning completely confident that nothing even crossed their minds and I bet you not many people can say those types of things and that's my way that's my way of looking at things it's like I say when I meet people I look at them and you know they'll be talking about boxing oh you should have done this ah if I'd have done that ah I saw that fight with um Gregory Tony and yeah yeah you, you, uh, you know you sure boxing's for you and, you know, excuse my language, but I feel like, fuck you, who the fuck are you to tell me, you f fat fucker, to tell me that I should have done this, should have done that, when you can't even manage your own weight. And without getting too bitter, I just look at these people and I think to myself, they've not got a clue. Ignorance is bliss. They couldn't survive a day in the places I've been or the places that people I know have been or that are. It's you know it's so it's it's a no-brainer. You don't you don't need to be a rocket scientist to think about these things. This is a hard job. This there's no harder job than this. This takes guts, takes determination, takes whatever else. You know I'm sure other fighters will, will tell you, and I've told you, it's not an easy job. So anybody what does this type of thing, I've got ultimate respect for them. Anybody what does anything related with this type of thing because it all each position goes in hand your job is just in, as important as me getting in the ring and fighting because you, you're gaining interest you understand so it all goes in hand but um i don't think there's any 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 more credible position to be in than than a fighter's position obviously you know listen to you talk not just over the last couple of days but over the last sort of couple of years you know i understand it You've been in some of the the toughest um, gyms, I was going to say prisons, uh, in the country. So, is your mentality kind of like, if you can get through that, and on a day to day basis, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week uh, for such a a long period of time, then what can you accomplish in the ring? Is that is that your attitude to it? Yeah, the def the two can definitely be related, because it's like I say, I've I've been in every prison um, in Britain, I think. You know, I've been in um, all the Cat A establishments. I've uh, been in a few, a few of the Cat B uh, establishments. Not, it's, it's not every prison, but I'm on about the prisons. What um, you need to have your wits about you in. So, I've, 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 I've conditioned myself to survive 
um, around these type of people and in these types of places and if you can survive like I say I look at people what have got an opinion too quickly what make judgments too quickly I look at these people and I compare them to myself and I think would you survive in the places I've been and nine out of ten times the answer is no so it's it's something that I do take into training, I do take into the fight, I do take into when we're sat and we're waiting to spar with Vladimir and we know he's going to take, take our, try and take our heads off because this guy takes no prisoners. Whatever he prepares for is what he'll emulate in the fight. He understands this, he's been doing it 30 years. So these types of things, what come with such a sport and such a way of life, it definitely, it definitely helped me condition for this type of thing because not not anybody can do this. If 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 everybody could do it, I'm sure everybody would be doing it because who wouldn't want to be known as the champion of the world? Who wouldn't want to be known as somebody what's uh, achieving in in such a, uh, a physical and um, uh, tactical sport? You know, it's 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 definitely something that that deserves credit. How do you know? I'm 36 now. You're 36, so if you're putting a, a realistic outside... Like I look 36. You don't look... So, no, no, you look... No, you, you, don't, you, look older, you look older. <laughs> Richard, you, you, I mean, when you to put a realistic stance on... Fuck you. Sorry, good shot. Uh, realistic stance on taking into consideration your age and what you can accomplish in however long your boxing career will remain for, what what comes out? What do you think? I think to myself, I think, you know, if whatever whatever position I can get myself in, I'll be grateful for. If I was to quit boxing right now, it's, I've, I've reached a, a respectful level, but I, I've not got that quit in me. Um, and if I was to finish boxing, it wouldn't be... I won't be. I, won't, I wouldn't put it as oh I've quit. I'd put it as I've got um, another path that I'm going to follow. But right now, yeah, I'm just looking at getting fit, um, getting the best preparation that this sport can offer with Vladimir Klitschko, uh, with anybody else I can get preparation with, and the ultimate, the ultimate uh, goal, the ultimate conclusion is to feed my kids, get a nice house, money in the bank, and um, all my faculties, faculties intact, so I'm on I'm on the right path, and I'm not I've not really got any plans or aspirations because I'm not qualified to know that if I fight this guy, if I do that, if I go this way, I'm not qualified to know that to know the incomes and outcomes of of um, the technical side of boxing, and I'm I'm very fortunate that I've got people like Adam behind me, managing me and training me because. Adam's seen it all and done it all before. If and Adam's honest with me, if he thinks that um, something will work, we'll go with it. If he thinks that something won't work, he'll tell me straight. So it's 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 just a matter of just cracking on with what I'm doing, making improvements where I'm going to make obvious improvements, and seeing what out, seeing what comes. It's um, you could call it a roll of the dice, but. Um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm enjoying what I'm doing, and I'm getting paid for it. So uh, I'm feeding my kids, and I'm learning invaluable experiences. Life, life's got to offer. So it's a, an old cliche, you can call it, uh, where boxers, you know, say that boxing saved their life. Um, but in your case, without boxing, do you believe that you'd be back in prison or were still dead? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think I think if if I'd have not gone um, the route I went through with Brendan, you know, I told you the story about when the day that I got out of prison, um, and I got into a fight outside. I nearly killed the guy, and um, that just gave me a wake up call. You know, you might call me stupid, or you might say that I'm I've not learned my lesson, but uh, nobody's learned my lesson more than what I've learned my lesson um, that's what actually got me into boxing because I was frightened into thinking that I'm going to end up like one of these guys what's been put in a circumstance uh, where he's, he's done, the, he's done the, the, the immediate best thing and he's doing life in prison you know all these things flash before my eyes 
and I know only too well what it, what it's like behind those behind those bars. I know only too well what it's like behind those walls. Being told when to, you know what, being told when you can sleep, being told when you can eat. I ain't going back there. It's as simple as that. Um, but boxing has definitely put me on the right, on the right path. Because if you think about it, if I weren't involved in boxing, I wouldn't be in the Stangle work in Austria at the foot of the Alps. I wouldn't know Adam. Um, I wouldn't have got all the experiences I've got meeting people like yourself, meeting people uh, what I've met around um, on on this on this uh, walk of path. I wouldn't have done it. So definitely, it's, it's it's steered me in the right direction, and it's definitely held me in good stead for anything else I want to do. Because if you can dedicate yourself in training, if you can train yourself to the point of being sick and bleeding and sweating beyond comprehension, then you can do anything. You can do anything. It's as simple as that. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really positive about everything now, and it's, it's all thanks to boxing. There's no two ways about it. I've got a friend um, who spent six years in prison. He was an amateur boxer uh, before he went in. His name's Tommy Jacobs. Oh, yeah, I know you. you know Tommy. Yeah, I know you. Yeah, yeah I mean. I yeah, and um, nice fella. He, Tommy is a nice fella, and you know, I interviewed him not probably about eight, eight, nine months ago, maybe even a year ago. And he, he's on, you know, I think he's on the verge of sort of getting his license, judging by some of the things I've been reading on Facebook. So, um, but again, his career never really got started, and he's trying to sort of he had an amateur career, but now he's trying to uh, obviously make it. It's not, it's not easy, people. I'm willing to give him a chance, and you know. No, well, the thing is, you know, you you you've you signed with a stigma as an ex-con. You signed with a stigma that um, as soon as things start to go wrong, you know, you'll let everybody down, and you'll end up in the same position, and you'll resort straight back to to criminology or whatever you want to call it. But when people have served probably over five years, I'd say, in, in my in my experience, when you've served over five years. It gives you a, a different outlook on things. You know, there's always the exception to every rule. But the majority of the time, it, people what have served over five years, it gives them a different outlook on life because you've had a big chunk of your life snatched away from you. Or should I say, you've given a big chunk of your life away. And it makes you think to yourself, is that is that what I want or is this what I want? And there's no comparison. Like I said, there's always the exception to the rule. People do make mistakes over and over and over again. There is people what have served 20 years in prison and they end up back in the same position uh, within a year of being out. There's always the exception to rules. But in my case and in Tommy's case, I hope um, we've learned our lesson and we're just trying to do something positive. And it's like I say, boxing takes dedication. It takes focus it takes uh, discipline, it takes determination, it takes all the good things, all the good um, elements that you'd need to do anything to achieve something in life. So it can be used, it can be used to, to hold you in good stead and I think I've, I think I've done that. So who, who knows, who knows? The best way to make God laugh is tell him your plans, like I said. So I'm just going with the floor, man. All right, Richard Towers, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Uh, probably the best scenery I've had in an interview, so uh, thanks for bringing me up here. Nice one, man. Nice one, Coogan. Thanks a lot. No thanks problem, and we'll catch up with you soon. Best of luck with uh, the rest of your, your time out here. Coogan Cassis, Richard Towers, IFL TV. Thank you very much.